What's happening everybody? Trey here and today reactions to the classics. It's time for some more David Bowie ladies and gentlemen. This time we're doing the suite, the three song suite off of Diamond Dogs. It's going to be Sweet Thing, Candidate, and then the Sweet Thing Reprise. And uh, I want to thank our longtime patron supporter of the channel, my dude Scott. Thank you, Scott, for uh, suggesting this one to me, man. Um, it's off of his record, Diamond Dogs. We've uh, covered a lot of Bowie stuff on the channel, man. Bowie's been such an awesome discovery uh, since the the inception of this channel. Really, really enjoyed going through his uh, work. Um, I've listened to every record of his, including this one up until 1980, but uh, it's not like I'm incredibly well-versed uh, with, uh, with this suite here, so I'm looking forward to diving in a little bit deeper and having the lyrics up as I listen to it. And so uh, let's just kind of get into it, man. This, uh, as I mentioned, was recorded for Diamond Dogs uh, in 1974. And um, it has a little interesting trivia you know. In the opening line to Sweet Thing, it contains the lowest note Bowie had recorded in a studio record, uh, C2, until uh, his 2002 record of Heathen. And uh, diving into it a little bit more, um, this was once at the center of Bowie's uh, attempts to create a theatrical stage production based on George Orwell's genre-defining dystopian novel, 1984. Uh, I'm sure if you uh, grew up and had to go to high school, at some point you had to read 1984. I know I did. But uh, he couldn't secure the rights for uh, from Orwell to uh, kind of make this. So ultimately, in creating Diamond Dogs, it was kind of a loose concept album centering around things of a glam dystopia, the end of the world, with all the rusty moral decay of something like 1984, but with a little less of the minimalism. So uh, Sweet Thing kind of uh, keeps some of this, has some paranoia, fear, loneliness. Um, so that's kind of where we're going, y'all. Uh, as I noted, I have listened to this record before. I uh, do like this track, Sweet Thing. I'm not as familiar, though, and well-versed with the Candidate and then the reprise. So uh, I'm looking forward to this, man. Always love diving into Bowie, one of the, the greatest of all time. I, I think that's undisputed. And uh, if you like this video, y'all, before we get into it, be sure to give a big thumbs up. That helps us out here at the channel. And if you like what you see, hit that big red subscribe button. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel like my guy Scott does and uh, have us react to something here, you can check out our Patreon page down below. Be sure to join us over on Facebook as well. Got a cool music group there as well as Twitch for our live streams. But all that to say, y'all, we're just going to let them all play together and uh, enjoy the uh, eight and a half, nine minutes. And then afterwards, kind of uh, break it down and uh, see, see what we got here. So got the lyrics pulled up. Let's get it. Starting with that eerie ambiance here. Like a portrait in flash of trails on a leash Will you see that I'm scared and I'm lonely So I'll break up my room and yawn and I'll run to the center of things But I know it won't be Boys, 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 So much going on in just two minutes, man. Showing Bowie's range and creativity. Makes me feel 
important and free Does that make you smile? Isn't that me? I'm in your layering of the vocals here is just fantastic. I believe Bowie's on guitar on this as well, but don't hold me to that. Candidate time. And I believe Bowie's on saxophone as well. Mike Darcy killing it on the end too in the in and us out. Your face 
down? Not yet, ladies and gentlemen. That, that effect is tight on this lead guitar. Killing use of the panning effects, too. sweet here coming in man what a uh ooh, so much packed into what eight and a half nine minutes here and just showcasing the creativity versatility the just genius of, of david bowie man is is in this suite we start off with sweet thing and uh just i i, I didn't um I didn't know the first time I listened to this um, months and months ago about the whole, uh, you know, kind of that post uh, apocalyptic dystopian, you know, that influence from 1984, which uh, I'm, I'm sure if you read 1984 uh, recently, you'll you'll be able to, to let me know in the comments some of these um, similarities between uh, some verses here, if there's any, because it, it's been a minute since I read 1984, and I'm sure I wasn't uh, fully paying attention uh, senior uh, in high school, Trey, or whenever we read it, but uh, starting off, man, uh, kind of getting some... Uh, Kind of getting some prostitute vibes, if I do say so myself. In the uh, in the first song here, he uh, notes, um, "Is it safe in the city to love in a doorway to wrangle some screams from the dawn? And isn't it me putting pain in a stranger?" Um, and I don't know. That just that that kind of conjures up as as we go on. Um, when he notes, "Well, you see that I'm scared and I'm lonely, so I'll break up my room and yawn, and I run to the center of things where the knowing one says." And then we get that chorus boys boys it's a sweet thing um if you want it boys get it here uh for hope boys is a cheap thing cheap thing i think that's kind of the uh the center and maybe even the theme of this first uh first song here sweet thing is that hope it's a cheap thing man all these other things are cheap around them and uh hope it can be cheap in the sense that okay it costs nothing for you to hang on to some hope in a just trash world or it's a cheap thing in the sense that hope doesn't mean I, I really anything in this world man because hoping ain't gonna get you anything um I, I and that's one of the reasons i like this track i think there's some room for interpretation here that one can have and um even in that first verse bowie when he started off very almost baritone and low i guess uh what i was saying at the start was uh, kind of right um because i i don't recall bowie going lower uh than that uh, for anything i've heard of him but then he was able by the end of just that first verse not even the song to get up really high in his register uh, and then later on he even notes I'm glad that you're older than me makes me feel important and free does that make you smile isn't that me um, if this trade is a curse then I'll bless you and turn to the crossroad of hamburgers and and then he trails off into the course again so again I'm kind of getting the the thing he's kind of paid for somebody uh, for for a night of love one might say and uh, who, who knows and um, but then we go into candidate our uh, our second here in the suite and he he notes uh we'll pretend we're walking home because your future's at stake so again kind of setting up with a lover in a sense don't know if it's the same um 
person from the first song, but uh, it, he says, my set is amazing. It even smells like a street. Um, and uh, the, later on, yeah, I'm having so much fun with the poisonous people spreading rumors and lies and stories they made up, man. Uh, it's again, kind of getting to that seediness of this uh, environment that Diamond Dogs has around it. And even in the first track, Sweet Thing, I mentioned it in the reaction, but it started off very kind of eerie and, and ambient with uh, what was going on in the background. Uh, also, just shouting out, Bowie uh, is on lead guitar here, so this says, and saxophone uh, showcasing his musical talent there. And the, the wonderful Mike Garson on piano has always uh, really killed it, especially in uh, the reprise that we had. Um, but uh, one of my favorite lines in here, but there's a shop on the corner that's selling paper mache making bulletproof faces. Uh, that irony there, because paper mache is obviously made of paper, ladies and gentlemen, but making those uh, bulletproof faces and masks, that uh, the kind of dual opposites there. And then keeping with the opposites, we have Charlie Manson, one of the worst people of the 60s uh, in um, American history. And then we have Cassius Clay, the great Muhammad Ali, who's revered as one of the best of his era. So again, those um, that dichotomy there, if you want it, boys, get it here. So again, bringing that uh, bringing that up yet again, um, and so again, uh, kind of oozing that love, that uh, kind of sexual nature in here, especially at the end where he says, uh, "For I gave all I have in another bed on another floor in the back of a car in the cellar of a church with the dar ajour." He's looking for love here, uh, whether it's a car, whether it's even a church, whatever the case may be. Well, I guess we must be looking for a different kind but we can't stop trying till we break up our minds. Um, and then he finishes it out. I guess we could cruise down one more time with you by my side, it should be fine. So again, that love connection. We'll buy some drugs and watch a band then jump in the river holding hands. So that just kind of seems like, let's have one last night in this hellhole that we're in. <laughs> and give, end it with some drugs. And then when I interpret maybe I don't know if suicide is the intention here, but jumping in the river, holding hands, kind of that poetic love that we got there. And then we finished with the reprise, which instrumentally was just killer, really enjoyed and uh, thought that the panning effects of Bowie's guitar um, were great. And it seemed like it had some pedal effects on that as well. Um, Garson was going in, great drum beat in there um, as well. And uh, man, um, it just what a way to kind of set up the scene here that Bowie did in this suite. Very, very impressive. I'm glad that Scott pushed me to revisit this, and I hope if you've never heard it that you um, enjoyed it as well. And go go give Diamond Dogs a full-on spin. Definitely would love to review that on the channel uh, in, in full because it's a worthy, worthy record to say the least by Bowie here um, to, to break down. So thank you to Scott, man. Let me know what you think of this suite down below and uh, any, any references that I'm sure to have missed. Uh, that's another thing about Bowie's music, man. You can comb over uh, it many, many times when you listen and, and pick up new stuff, which I'm sure next time I listen to this suite, I'll be like, man, I should have said this or this in the video. But uh, anyways, y'all, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Happy listening, and I will see you.